Okay. We'll call the meeting to order over here at uh, 706. Could we all stand for the invocation? And Nancy Lee, can you give the invocation, please? Father John, we come before you tonight asking for your wisdom, knowledge, and discernment for those representing us to know your will for Princetown. We ask your peace and unity that only you can give. Thank you, thank you for working your will in our town. Bless those who represent us and their families. We pray as your word says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. We declare this for our town. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please remain standing for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Sandy, could you uh, please read the roll? Councilman Favoli. Here. Councilman Jack Russo. Here. Councilman Gray. Yes. Councilwoman Laura. Here. Supervisor Escobillo. Present. Also present is our attorney, Gerard Parisi. Okay, privileges of the floor. At every scheduled town board meeting, the public shall have the right to address the town board during the course of the meeting referred to as privileges of the floor. Members of the public should restrict their comments to items of town business. Although there is no official time constraint, speakers should be considerate of others so that all interested members of the public have an opportunity to be heard. There should be one portion of the meeting dedicated to privileges of the floor. Near the beginning of each meeting, all remarks, questions shall be addressed to the board. No person shall enter into discussion with a person having the floor. Council members may address any comments during the portion of the meeting referred to as council members' comments. Privileges of floor is opened up at 6 or 7.09. No takers? That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll close the uh, privilege of the floor up at 7 10. Okay. The department committee reports uh, our highway superintendent is uh, not feeling very well tonight, so he's absent, but uh, I think we discussed it last week. Last month's meeting, the uh, work that was done up on Ruder Drive, and we had an estimate for uh, overlook for this coming year for 25,000, I think it is. The county's going to be performing the work, so it's under a county contract. Uh, they have to replace the culvert in the road, and we're probably going to get an estimate to uh, to repave that road. Uh, other than that, I don't think Nick had anything else. On the agenda. Is there any questions about the highway department? No. no okay. Water. Clark Collins is uh, sick tonight. He's our water commissioner. We got our his assistant here, Wesley Blessing. He's going to uh, give a report on the uh, water department. Basically, last month we pumped to 1,645,000 gallons of water, which averages to about 50, 53,000 gallons a day, which is actually a little up uh, from normal. Uh, December was really a quiet month. We've been working on a uh, preventive maintenance program, so to prevent breakdowns in the future, uh, start a preventive maintenance program on all the pumps, whether it's booster pumps, well pumps. Uh, there was no real uh, schedule for preventive maintenance. So we're gonna, we've been working on that and trying to get that up and going. Uh, as far as what we did do for the year was a total of 19,453,000 and again the uh, daily average is 53,300 gallons a day for the year of 2019. Okay. Any questions for uh, Wes? No, he's done a very excellent job. 
I see it driving around. It's good. <laughs> oh. I'm I pulled the bottom of the ditch. Though. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> ben, you got anything for him? Jim? No, no, I, I am disappointed that we're not going to get, it doesn't look like we're going to get that grant. No. no. I'm disappointed about that. I would have liked to have seen that go through, but uh, <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, that doesn't look like it's going to fly. That's a grant that we applied for last year. Was, uh, the state turned it down again. They said the system is too new to uh, to uh, get the grant. We were asking, uh, Doug Cole put it in again. I think we were asking for maybe a million dollars or something to fix all of the uh, joints <coughs> and uh, redo the system. But uh, we didn't get it again. I, knew, I didn't think we would. It was a long shot because the system is too new. It's only 20 years old, even though uh, there was problems with it from the start. Uh, they said that to uh, apply again next year. This is the second time we applied, so. Can we apply last year? Yes. Okay. Well, why don't go just for a little bit? Well, they put it in for what the, uh, it, it wouldn't have matter anyway. The, 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 uh, the, the system is too new. They give it to uh, towns like Rotterdam that's over 100 years old. Those type of uh, systems that, you know, ours they figure is way too new to be even having these kind of trouble. So uh, we didn't get that grant. I think it's on a point system too. You get points for an old system. You get points if your demographic. Uh, we happen to have a town that has a, a fairly high income demographic that works against us. We lose points there. So if you're in a town that, for instance, uh, has a lot of uh, uh, less income. That they would have more points, better chance of getting the grant. So we had actually had a lot of things, unfortunately, uh, working against us when we applied for these grants. But you know, we, pro we probably will continue to apply for them. I don't know. It doesn't look like we're going to get it. But I'll read to you what they said. Thank you for your application in the New York State Water Infrastructure Improvement Act grant program. I regret to inform you that the community project was not selected to receive an award during this round. However, please note that the town may reapply for a grant in the next offering of the program, which is expected in 2020. So we'll put it in again for next year, but it'll probably be the same thing. I would like to uh, thank uh, Wesley, too. He's been doing a great job. And the whole water department under the parks. Supervision too has been doing a great job, and uh, I want to thank you for that, Wes, stepping forward to help the town out. Thank you. Okay. Code enforcement. This is building inspector's monthly report. Total permits one, permits issued one, permits. Inspection fees collected $48, inspections four, code zoning inspections one, fire inspection zero, final building inspection zero, I guess, certificates of occupancy compliance zero, bank deposit zero, check to supervisor zero, checkbook balance as of January 14, 2020, $1,892.24. Activities and zoning, working on complaints as needing, working on training and zoning as needed, working on permit final inspection as needed, reviewing plans as needed. Thomas Verini, building inspector, if anybody has any questions, he's in the other office over here. Uh, I can bring him in and he can answer anybody's questions. Or... Okay. Okay. Dog enforcement. Uh, Animal it's been, control. been quiet. Shh. Say nothing. <laughs> I haven't had anything in like three weeks. No that's calls, perfect. no complaints, no lost dogs. So that's about it. Any questions for Ben? No. No. Okay. Court system. Michelle may work. Good. Um, the report for December was submitted for eighty-seven twenty-nine. We're still around the same amount that we were last month. The safe has been received and it's been carried into the room over there. We'll be moving uh, the rest of the boxes, hopefully from the town's vault in, in the next couple weeks. Um, as everybody probably knows, bail reform has started on January 1st, and it's been 
running rapidly through the papers with people's opinions about it. Um, the CAP program is the centralized arraignment part of centralized arraignments in Schenectady County. This is brand new and we're in phase one, which includes Glenville, Rotterdam, Niskeyoon, and the city of Schenectady, which kind of rotates judges. Dwaynesburg and Princetown probably won't be incorporated into the process until phase two. So what they're doing is they're, uh, the sheriff's office is, the, the jail is notifying the judges who are on a rotating schedule that they have a detainee that needs an arraignment. And if it's for the town of Glenville, if that judge is available, he can, he'll go to his court in the morning. If, if he's not, then Judge Caruso in the city will do the arraignment. So somebody who's been arrested through the night will be detained until the morning uh, or the afternoon session of court. Uh, and then we'll have an immediate arraignment with counsel present. So it's pretty much brand new in Schenectady County. A lot of counties are, have already been doing the centralized arraignment. Um, Princetown hopefully will jump on board in phase two. I mean, we don't border the city of Schenectady, so technically I can't do an arraignment for the city of Schenectady. We would have to touch the city of Schenectady someplace to do an arraignment for the city. So, uh, How did that bail uh, affect you? How does it bail affect reform? Well, there's certain qualifying offenses that a person has to be released on their own recognizance or with an appearance ticket. And um, so far, um, I haven't had an arraignment to release anybody yet, so. Um, but there are certain qualifying offenses that you can set bail, and now bail has to be set in three forms, not only two. So there's gotta be three different forms of bail when you can set bail. When are we getting the new site? We have it, it's in there. Oh, is it in there? It's in there, yep. Yep, oh, it's up on the it? shelf. I have it. Um, Sandy, today. Today. Oh, today. Yep. And uh, what about the uh, the metal detectors for the doors? I haven't heard anything about that because I was kind of holding off to wait to see about the grant because that's a really big expense. Was I mean we can order them whenever. It's just I. It's only another month or two before they make the award. Oh. Okay. So I was kind of hoping to see what the if any we get that but if not we've got the purchase or the cost of it so any questions for the show no no okay, okay. thank you michelle thank you uh, our assessor is he still in the office over there does anybody know if you want, let me look. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> it's not going to come in, so what's the big deal? He's got to give a report. Do you have a report, Richard? Yes, sir. Should I send up here? As always. Yeah, wherever you'd like. Oh, okay. Uh, January's occurred. Um, last year's all done. Uh, state is taking care of all of our senior citizens through an automated program. But as senior citizens contact us, we remind us, we remind them that they're an automatic system, and if they're not, we can get them on it. Additionally, we're still following up on our low-income seniors, follow-up with phone calls, house visits, and letters to make sure that our low-income seniors get their their due for their tax breaks on their school bills. Everything else seems to be in proper order. Um, last year's paperwork, uh, the rolls all came in fine. No questions, no problems. Uh, we're getting along well with code enforcement. Any questions for uh, Richard? Oh, P.S. I'm already ahead on this year's continuing ed. This year's continuing ed is already taken care of. That expense is already taken care of by myself, so the town didn't get charged for my continuing ed for calendar 2020. Okay. Any questions? Stick around for a second yeah, session. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay, buildings and grounds. Uh, we really don't have anything going on uh, this this past month. 
We've had some work done over at State Police, uh, just uh, maintenance that had to be done around the building. <coughs> Nothing really has been taking place in the town hall. Everything seems to be running well. <coughs> Present time, thank God. <laughs> so, uh, any questions for me? No. no. We will be uh, negotiating our new uh, contract with the uh, state police for another five-year agreement. Gerard and I are working on that now, our attorney, and we'll be uh, have to go over to Albany to sit down and discuss it with them. But they're uh, they're going to be with us for another five years, so that's a good thing. I'm not sure if an upgrade in our IT is building and grounds, or is that going to be something? If you'd like to talk about that right now, that'd be good, Jim. Yeah, um, I'm sure everybody reads the papers and uh, has been noticing that we've had, well, other municipalities have had problems. They've had uh, uh, all kinds of IT problems with the computers getting hacked, and then uh, it's just been a nightmare for small municipalities, school districts, hospitals. And um, we're really concerned here, so we're going to uh, kind of uh, notch up our security. We're negotiating a, an agreement now uh, with on this computer to do more proactive monitoring of our entire system. Uh, the other thing we want to do is put uh, another secure hard drive so that all our data is backed up continually. Literally, the minute files are put in, they're backed up. So even if we were to be hijacked and, uh, uh, you know, we would have a, a, another copy. We wouldn't have to pay these uh, ransoms, which are so many people are doing. I mean, that's, it's terrible. Um, and often the, the ransoms are not huge amounts of money. They're twenty-five, fifty, dollars $100,000. But for a little town like this, uh, and we have no taxing powers. We don't have a tax, town tax. So, you know, if we were in a situation where, you know, we got, we got hacked and we got hijacked, we, we couldn't come up with $100,000. So we're, we're concerned and we're going to, um, we're looking at upgrading everything. So I guess that goes with building and grounds to some degree because we have a server on site. We don't do a cloud server. It's our server's on site and we want to back that up with another physical server. And redundancies in uh, uh, security as well. So that's in the works. It's gonna cost money, unfortunately. I mean, more money than we're paying now, but you know, the way things are today, um, the entire board, it's our responsibility, and we have to protect the town and everybody in it, and that means protecting our data. So. <coughs> You know, if we have to bite the bullet, and it looks like we do, we're, we're going to have to do that going forward, and, and going forward fairly quickly. Uh, the uh, price of that is probably going to be between six and seven thousand a year. Uh, probably right around between six and seven thousand. That'll include uh, having a signed contract, uh, which does a lot of things. I'm not going to get into all the details, but it does a lot of things when we're on contract, um, including uh, redundancy and regular uh, analysis of our system regular backups, a lot of stuff that it's really redundant, but we feel it's necessary at this point, given the fact that some of these things have hit close to home, and we're very, very concerned about it. And without, uh, without the ability to tax, if we could just tell everybody, hey, you know what, guess what? You've got to raise $100,000 to get the tax. We don't have a tax. Can't do it. So we have to, that's why we're always pinching pennies in everything we do. I mean, we, we just don't we can't go to the to the base and tax, and we don't want to. I mean, I've said many times, and told most of the people on the board that if we had to have a town tax, we'd resign. I'd resign, and I think most of us feel the same way. So we don't ever want to go that route. But this is going to be, a, unfortunately, a necessary expense that we're have, gonna, gonna have going forward. No choice. We were uh, we had a little problem uh, yesterday with the uh, computer system, and, and uh, we were on a, uh, we'll call like uh, charged by the hour. So we're not at the top of the list apparently, even though we've been with our present company for uh, since computers have existed, we went with this outfit. And, uh, but they're telling us now that people that have contracts with them are uh, received the best priority. In other words, they're at the top of the list. 
whereas we have to wait. So that's another reason why we want to go with a uh, contract, am I correct? Yes, yes, it's definitely good. We're going to be notched up uh, higher on the uh, food chain, as, as it were. Right now, <coughs> we're, uh, we're as low as we can go on the food chain, which is not good because if we have an emergency, they will tr try to accommodate us, but if they can't, they have to, they have to go with their contractual people first. So we're going to notch that up and put ourselves in a, in a little higher position, which is a good thing. You know? And we also want to make sure that if anybody does have an issue in town, like if Sandy has an issue or Isla or anybody has an issue with a town computer, you know, we want them to be able to call and be, get help immediately. Especially since you know a lot of our staff is not here full time, so when they're here, they need to get that taken care of. So for all those reasons, and also bear in mind that we do already pay for services, so it's not like we're going, you know, from zero to six thousand. We pay for services, so uh, those services that we're paying for now will be incorporated in the contract. So the net net cost is not going to be probably six; it'll be somewhat less than that. But nonetheless, we have to do it. We don't have much choice. Any questions for Jim? No. Okay. Thank you, Jim. There was one other thing over here under building and grounds. We did have our front doors reinspected. They're required every year. Uh, Center for Security came in and uh, and uh, checked them out to make sure they're all right. So that has to be done every year, and that was done this past week. Do we need a resolution on that or anything for, uh, for this month or we wait for next month? Okay, public hearings, none. Meeting minutes, it is hereby resolved the meeting minutes of December 10th, 2019, regular town board meeting, and January 2nd, 2020 organizational meeting are approved or as amended. Amendment to the January 2nd, 2020 meeting minutes, the town clerk salary should read 32,004 cents as reflected in the 2020 budget page for amendment to the January 2nd, 2020 minutes, planning board alternate just Jennifer Blessing term date should read 1231 to 2021, page 14. Discussion? <clears throat> I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Sandy? Councilman Favoli? Yes. Councilman Jack Russo? Yes. Councilman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Resolution passed. Resolution of the Princetown Civic Committee. Be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Princetown hereby dissolves the Town of Princetown Civic Committee and directs that any all funds remaining under or held by the Civic Committee be here forth delivered to the Town of Princetown General Fund. Let me get into this now because this is quite important. It came to light to me uh, it was past fall that uh, the <coughs> money that was in the Civic Committee which was $10,000 in 2016, now has approximately $400 left in it. The, uh, I went up to the uh, MBT bank, the uh, checking account for the civic committee is in the town board's name, or is in the town of Princeton's name under a federal tax ID number. This money that was dispersed should have been brought to the town board for authorization. The town board is responsible for this money, not the civic committee. Any and all distribution of monies, it has to be approved by the town board. I have all of the statements dating back to uh, 2016 when this took place. $6,500 to, uh, to uh, the uh, Schenectady County Historical Society, $1,000 to a church for a 200th anniversary party, $125 to a, uh, a fire department, not in Princetown, when we do have a fire department, four of them that service our town, that certainly could have used the money, and I know that Plotterkill 
which is not part of the Fire Commission District, certainly could have used some monies. Uh, monies given to private individuals. I turned this over to the State Controller's Office. I'm hoping that they come in and investigate it. I've been in contact with them twice. The town Board was responsible for this money. This was done without Town Board authorization. The Controller's Office informed me that anything that was spent with this should have been done for the Town of Princetown and not any other association. So that's where we stand. I put a hold on, as a Chief Financial Officer of the Town, I put a hold on the funds from the Civic Committee that's left and we let the chips lie where they fall and I'm hoping that the, uh, the Controller's Office comes in and, and examines this. I've got all of their bank statements back <coughs> in 2016 and to be quite honest with you, I'm very upset about this. This was done at a time when we were bringing in the Vietnam Wall and we didn't use those funds purposely and we never used any funds from the town of Princetown to bring that wall in. People went out and solicited donations and that's the way we did it. We had donations from businesses, residents of the town, and all of the volunteers in the town. And to, sit, to think that they went through $10,000 without any authorization from the town or the town board is disgusting to me. And to say I'm upset, well, yes, I am upset about it. I want to know who signed the checks. Who signed the checks to do it? They're right here. Anybody wants to see them? I well, think we can discuss it in a, in a public forum. Say the have. names. Say the names right now. Why not? Well, it was done by the uh, two people on the uh, that were signing <coughs> the checking book. There was three names on the checking book uh, as signers. Uh, one of them was uh, Mary Sue Reed, the other one was Lynn Kozak. Uh, they both signed these checks, and I don't have any meeting, meeting minutes of it. I wasn't the town supervisor. Who authorized them to do that? I have no idea, Doug. They didn't come to the town, so nobody did. Well, they didn't come to the town and board. they got to come to the town board to get that approved. Right. Okay? And well, let this, me tell you, I want them crucified. And that's the way I feel. They took $10,000 of Prince Town's money that never went to Vietnam Wall. They didn't want to do that. And that was the other regime. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. All right. But I am totally disgusted. That was the other regime. It was 2016. So everybody in this town hall remembers 2016. Well, well, the bottom line is it's it's our responsibility at <coughs> the town hall, it's the board. And my face is getting red and I'm pissed. And we did make an effort. We did ask for uh, because, in fact, today, this afternoon, we were all here at 5 o'clock. We all signed off on all the uh, balance sheets <coughs> from every department. That's what we do every year. We have to do that. And we asked years ago for an accounting so that we could sign off. We, we asked repeatedly, and we did not get it. So for anyone who says, and rightfully so, that it's a responsibility they of the board. They never brought one no. thing here and I asked but for the record and I'm an yeah. asshole because I didn't for the for the record we did ask and that's important that's an important uh, distinction to make we did ask because if we didn't ask then we would be just as responsive but we did we requested those that data we requested I those want check every one we of them get. prosecuted I want that money back it's unlikely Very soon, we'll read the whole bunch. I want it back. Well, the controller has it. 
and uh, hopefully they can do something about it. Or Why don't you investment. give money to a fire department that's not in your district? Where, who, what was the fire department? You got it right there. It was in uh, some place outside of Esperance. I don't know the name. I've got the name. Here. It's not Princeton. <laughs> no. How come they didn't give it to Potterskill, Pine Grove? How come? <laughs> On the back of the checklist. Yes. And she's got it right here. Bloomingdale? Bloomingdale? Bloomingdale, that's out western part of the state. That's where it went. And it went 2016 when <coughs> Vietnam Wall was here and the town of Princeton put money in that day. I want them crucified. Mike Joyce, the whole bunch that was in it. I want, I want to know why. Well, we started the process. The controller, it's in the controller's office now. There's nothing we can do until the controller provides us with his report. That'll be forthcoming soon. So right now, we're in the I want one. them to bring the money back. Take it out of their pocket. Okay. Really? I want <coughs> Mary Sue Reed, Mike Joyce, that whole bunch, I want it to come back to the town and put it in there. Now we got property over here. We could build a pavilion with that 10 grand. Am I right or wrong? I can dig the holes, I can build it. They well, screwed uh, the town of Princeton uh, for, for spite because they wanted to have their thing. Okay. They the, didn't uh, work. The controller said that the, the <coughs> money should have been, has to be spent in the town of Princeton to benefit the town of Princeton. Not and everything was spent out of Princeton. That's correct. Okay. I rest my case and I know my face is red as a chair. Well, process has started, so there's nothing to do until the controller gets I want to sue. I don't care. Well, as soon as we thought about it. What it costs the town of Princeton. I want to sue. I want that money back. Well, we started the process over here. They, uh, as soon as we found out about it, we did what we were supposed to do. We did our due diligence and went and turned this over to the controller's office as soon as I heard about it. I went and got all of the bank statements, put a freeze on the account for whatever money's left in there, which isn't much. 400 bucks, roughly. And, uh, notify the controller's office. I was in contact with them twice and I'll certainly be in contact with them again and let them come in and do their job and let the chips lie where they fall. Let Mary Sue Reed get it out of her pocket and Mike Joyce and the whole bunch that was in it. <coughs> I'm sorry. That's the way I feel. Any, anything else? Nicole? Well, that's where we stand with that. It's a shame we have to go through this, but uh, it's a total shame. Yes, it is. Uh, they're the ones <coughs> that ruined it down for 10 years. Okay, I'll read the re resolution again. Be it resolved that the town board of the town of Princeton hereby dissolve the town of Princeton Civic Committee and directs that any and all funds remaining under or held by the Civic Committee hereafter here delivered to the Town of Princeton General Fund. Might add that money was given to uh, private individuals off of this too. Uh, is there a uh, any further discussion on it? Is there a motion? I'll make it. Is there a second? I'll second. 
Sandy? Councilman Pavoli? Yes. Councilman Jack Russo? Yes. yes. Councilman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Resolution passed. And just one more thing, just to reiterate, <coughs> today, just today at 5 o'clock, in the uh, senior room, all the books are laid out, everything, all the balance sheets, all the checkbooks, everything. Every member of council went in there to examine those books. If everything matched, the balance sheets matched, the numbers matched, then we signed certifying that. <coughs> we were unable to do that with this account for years because it was not provided to us, even though we requested it. So everybody should understand that it's they not like we just ignored it. it. They never right. brought it here. That's the point. But you should understand that we do check everything. So when monies are being spent, we have to verify, and all of us on the board check, look at the balance sheet, everything matches, we sign off. If it doesn't match, we don't sign off. But in most cases, it's, it's fine. In, in this case, we were unable to ever look at those books since when? Since well, we asked for it for years. Before, before 2016. Before that. I might add again over here, it, it, it's a town board that disperses the funds. <coughs> over here, we're responsible for. Uh, that's why we have it in here. All of these resolutions. Why, uh, where the money is being spent? You just can't spend town money without authorization we had from the town sign. board. We had to sign for them to write a check. I never signed one. Oh. All right, the resolution passed, so uh, it'll be on the website that the. Uh, <coughs> that the uh, Civic Committee has been uh, abolished. Okay, amendment to the Princetown Water District Rules and Regulations. It is hereby resolved that Section 3.1 of the Princetown Water District Rules and Re Regulations be amended by adding the following paragraph, no applications made under this section for tapping of the main and the installation of service pipe from Main to service line shall be approved between November 1st and March 30th unless special circumstances are present and deemed appropriate by the Water Commissioner. And if uh, Wes, you'd like to comment on that, why the reason is for this? The reason for that is uh, basically uh, frost in the ground and the density of soil increases in the, in the fall and you run a, ri a, a lot higher risk damaging the water main and everything else when there's frost in the ground and the soil density is so much higher. Uh, at that point in time, it's harder to work with if there is a water main break. So to reduce the chances of that, most of the other towns in the area do have a, what they call a tapping season and that's from April 1st to November 1st. So we're just updating our rules. Before this, it was usually up to the Water Commissioner's discretion if we wanted to take a chance of doing it, but uh, Clark and Wesley felt that they, we should have a resolution in there to eliminate this problem. So, uh, I agree with them. I agree, too, because right now there's no frost in the ground. But when there's frost in the ground, you got a then problem? Then you don't do it. That's right. Okay, any further discussion on it? Is there a motion? Second. I'll make it. Doug, you're second it? Okay. Sandy? Councilman Vivaldi? Yes. Councilman Jack Russo? Yes. Councilman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Resolution passed. Planning board appointment. Uh, this was an oversight on its last meeting, so uh, we have to do it. Sandy pointed it out to me. Uh, be it resolved that Diane Bishop is appointed to the planning board alternate for a term to expire 12-31-2022. I just said this was an oversight, and uh, we thought that uh, she was on for the remaining years, but uh, apparently it was uh, was only for a fill-in. Am I correct, Sandy? No, it was regular, but I, there was just confusion about who was being appointed. Okay. <coughs> Uh, discussion? Is there a motion? I'll make it. Is there a second? Second. All abstain. 
Councilman Favoldi? Yes. Councilman Jack Russo? Yes. Councilman Mora? Yes. Doug, you're abstaining? I abstain. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Resolution passed. Procurement policy. You hereby resolve that, that the town of Princeton adopts the following procurement policy for the calendar year 2020. See below. I don't think I have to read this whole thing. You have no change from the last year. No, we have no change from the last year. So it's the we'll same as for another half an hour. Yeah, it's the same as the last two years. It's the same as the last few years. Yes. Okay. Uh, is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Sandy. Councilman Favoldi? Yes. Councilman Jack Russo? Yes. Councilwoman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Okay. General Funds Claims. Is hereby resolved that the town board approves claims number 276 to 295 in the amount of $14,412.12. Discussion? Is there a motion? I'll make it. Is there a second? I'll second it. Councilman Pavoldi? Yes. Councilman Jack Russo? Yes. Councilwoman Mora? Yes. Councilman Craig? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Uh, let's see. General funds transfer. Is hereby resolved that the town board approves the following transfers? And there's a list of them there. Discussion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Sandy? Councilman Yes. Yes. Councilman Moore? Yes. Councilman Grant? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Water funds claim. <coughs> It is hereby resolved the town board approves claims number 141 and number 156 in the amount of $10,710.78. Your discussion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Sandy? Councilman Pavoldi? Yes. Councilman Jack Russo? Yes. Councilman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Waterfronts transfer. It is hereby resolved the town board approves the following transfers. And there's the amounts below. Discussion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Sandy? Councilman Pavoldi? Yes. Councilman Jack Russo? Yes. Councilwoman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Highway claims. It is hereby resolved the town board approved claims number seven through number eight in the amount of $1,009.67. Uh, discussion? I'll make the is there a second? I'll second. Councilman Pavoldi? Yes. Councilman Jack Russo? Yes. Councilwoman Nora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Highway transfer. Here is how the town board approved the transfer of $1,010 from account number 99019 to account number 5031. Discussion? Is there a motion? Thank you. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. Sandy? Councilman Pavoldi? Yes. Councilman Jack Russo? Yes. Councilman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. General funds claims hereby resolve the town board approves claim number one through number 10 in the amount of $14,326.68. Discussion? Is there a motion? I'll make it. Is there a second? I'll second it. <laughs> Councilman Pavoli? Yes. Councilman Jack Russo? Yes. Councilwoman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Water funds claims ab abstract number 12020, or year 2020, excuse me. The chair out town board approves claim number one through number three in the amount of $7,804.63. Discussion? Make the motion. Second. Sandy? Councilman Pavoldi? Yes. Councilman Jack Russo? Yes. Councilwoman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. <coughs> All right, council member comments, discussions. Doug? I don't know how you want to say this, but I want them crucified. 
I want them brought up on charges. I want that money back. And I know you can't get it back from the church and all this. But they, I gotta be really good. They took advantage of the town of Princeton to do what they did. I don't mind giving fourteen or twelve hundred dollars to the guy's house for. I don't mind that. But giving it to a fire department that's not even in our district and give it to churches and whatever they did. I want them to pay the money back out of their pocket. I mean they could have at least and I want her gone from the uh, town clerk's office. She is done in my mind. She's been here and she's pulled her stuff. Okay, I want her done. And I know Sandy can do a point whoever she wants. She's got to be done today. I'm sorry. That's the way I feel. Sorry. That's the way I feel. She stuck it to the town her whole life. When you did the spray out here, okay? You sprayed out here. What did she do? What did she say to you? Yeah, I know. Okay? I want to, I want to know what did she said. You're giving everybody all this stuff. She's a tree hugger. Okay. I, I I guess I'm getting a little out of hand. We we get we get your point. I think we're yeah. I think you make your point. But go look at her house. She's got a pond there with shit. Okay. I'm sorry. We, I got yeah, we don't want to get into ad hominem. I'm getting red in the face again. Biggest one. And I've lived in this town for 70 years, and I never had anybody try to screw somebody. Do we have any recourse on the 6,500 to the Schenectady? Not, like, not likely. <coughs> no. That's <laughs> the biggest one over here that the money's, the money's you know, yeah. they, uh, somebody gives you money. What do you do? You yeah, well, I didn't know if they were like a government organization. No, they're not. No, the Schenectady no. County Community or the uh, so, uh, Historical Society is not part of uh, Shut that the city off. or the uh, any government entity. Okay, it's, it's a so private it's association. And, and it's, not it's not their fault. No, it's not the fault of the I'll recipients. Yeah, we should all understand that. So the recipients yeah. of these yeah, I funds, I mean, <laughs> you know. It's not their fault. It, you know, it was not a benevolent account. It's not, you know, it's not a church. In our church, we do have funds like that. It's a benevolent account. If you're a deacon, you have the authority to write a check to whoever needs it. Oh, well, why do they here. write a check when it's not in Princeton? Well, they, they should not. Have. Why did they write a check that's not in Princeton for a fire department? And that's the reason this whole procedure is going forward. That's the reason. Okay, and going that's forward. my thing. I am so disgusted. I don't care. Whatever you want to say, I'm telling you right now on the camera, right now, this is totally disgusting. This is the town of Princeton. You're supposed to help the people in the town of Princeton. So, okay. You know, we I'm dissolved the civic yeah. committee, right? What's that? We dissolved the civic committee, right? So if we have extra money, <coughs> we still make the choice to do town. Four hundred bucks. Like I, I mean that money. Thousand. Yeah, I know. I don't mean that money, but like if we wanted to put the the pavilion up and we had the money yes. in our general fund, we, we could still use that money for that. that. I'm saying if we. That's what I said before. Right. He's saying if we get it back, it's Yeah, if we get extra money in the budget not, years from now, we can still use it for projects, yes. even without. As long as this committee. board gives it to Dustin, that's okay. the whole point. 
It has to go through this board. We have this to say yes. Everybody approved. That's what we yeah. do this for every day. I want to hire a warrior to, I'll pay the warrior to get that money back and make them pay for it that sign the checks. We're, we're probably There's not going to get the money people. back. And that's that's the reality of it. Three more people take it out of their funds. We're, we're doing the what we can do, which is dissolve the committee. I, we I got, certainly we dissolved don't. the committee. We did our what we're supposed to do. As soon as we found out about it, we turned it over to the controller's office. Uh, let them handle it, and I'm sure they're going to investigate it. And I hope, uh, like I said, let the chip fly where they fall. And uh, if that money was spent, we could have used that money for the uh, to to do something with the land that we acquired next. What did I just say? Yes. Now we just gotta wait. So. Okay. You got anything done other than that? I got the summer youth program numbers. Okay. Go ahead. So I emailed um, the town clerk over in Duanesburg. So this is the 2019 numbers, and the program ran from July 7th to August 9th. And it's either three or four hours a day. I'd have to look at the website again. It's either 8 to 12 or 9 to 12. But um, what she gave me was there were 548 children total last year in the program, and 82 of them were from Princetown. But I think that 548 is like we had 15 students, you know, um, kids today, 30 the next day, 25 the next day. Just adding those all together gets that 548, is what I think. So 82 were from Princeton. And then she said the average number of kids that went to this program was 117 per week, and 16 were from Princeton. And then two of their staff members in 2019 were Princeton residents. So make what you, what you want with those numbers, but does that warrant, uh, Sandy, what was the amount that we... It was $2,250 or something. Does that warrant <coughs> $2,250? $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, That's the question, man. Those numbers are higher than I thought they would be, quite frankly. I didn't think they'd be that high. Yeah, um, even if you take the low number, it's 16 from Princetown per week. Yeah. What happens with the, how much uh, do they put in? Do answer they're spending as opposed to what we're spending, right? Yeah, I'll ask. I'll email her back and try to get that number. Do you want anything I mean, else? if it's a 50-50 split, that's not right either. No, no, it wouldn't be worth it. Oh. Is there anything else you want me to ask her? I'll email no, her back. I, that, was, that would be my question, right? Okay. Well, thank you, Ben. Uh, let's see here. I've got something over here. I would like to have somebody uh, work on the uh, ethics policy. I'm looking for a volunteer. I think we uh, discussed that last week, that if you're on other boards, you can't be on the uh, ethics board. Yeah. So two, one has to be a town officer or a town employee. Sandy, do you know who's on our ethics committee? Jack and Jennifer Blessing. Who? Jack and Jennifer Blessing. Jack? Yes. So he's, he's an officer. Yes. So. Mel Melanie was also, or was going to be, but again, because she got appointed to the planning board, we... <coughs> is, Jennifer, is Jennifer a town officer or an employee? She's an alternate on the planning She's board. She's an alternate on the planning board. That's the problem with the small town. I think one of you have to resign. <laughs> well, you know, with uh, a small town, I know there's. I know. Um, uh, I, when I talk to uh, Gerard, like with Nicole, she serves as a secretary on two other boards. Yeah, but this is different. It falls under the ethics law and oh, okay. what the rules say about the makeup of the committee. Oh, okay. You can only have one town officer or employee. <coughs> like a volunteer to be on the uh, ethics and then. Town town officer. Officer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he can? Because you already have two, actually. One's going to have to. Oh, Jack. I'd be more along the way. And you would need to appoint two non officers or non employees. Unless you choose.
changed a lot, but that's what the law says now. Well, if anybody's got any suggestions, but it can't be anybody but an officer from the town board. It could right. be if that was the only well, like the one. The only one, yeah, right. Only one from the town board. From any town office. From any town yeah. office. And Jack is already on it. Correct. So we would need two more. Two that are non employees, right? Yeah. yeah. To get Nora. She's on the plan. So, so the, the logical she's thing the logical thing to do is for us to Yeah, she's an actual member. Put some names put some names on a list list. and and um, contact these folks and ask them if they would like to do that and volunteer. We know a lot of people in town. We know people that might be interested. If we can come up with five or six names, 10 names, we give them a phone call. Would you like to be on as long as they're not involved in any other part of town business? You know, we know enough people where we could do that. We could put some names on a list and, and we have to be proactive in this because obviously, you know, there's not enough people in the audience to, to necessarily monthly to choose volunteers from. So we're going to have to be proactive and seek people out. How many do we need? Two? I think so. Two. So we can certainly, we all know two people that would probably serve. We can put those names in a, in, in a, on a list and we can discuss it. And when yeah, we agree to the time. Yeah, hey, put it on the web. And then ask them, call up and ask. It's really, in my opinion, when you call someone and ask them if they would be on the ethics board, to me that's an honorable thing, an honorable, you're asking them, you're saying, we trust you enough to, to go on our ethics board because we feel you're fair and honest. So I think it's it's really honoring the person just to ask them, right? Probably that would be the simplest thing. I, uh, the reason I'm bringing this up, I think we should update our ethics policy. Uh, just, just for the fact that uh, it should be updated. I don't know what why just I went on it. right now. That's a good point. <coughs> so, if you know anybody, I, to be on. Yeah, I would say if you, if you can think of somebody, anybody on the board, think of one or two people that you think might consider this, <coughs> write their name down, and uh, once we get eight or nine names, we'll try to narrow it down to three or four, call these folks. So we need two, and Jack is the, who's the chairman, Jack? Yeah. You're the chairman? Okay, so then we'll have to. In, in, in fact, Jack, actually, I mean, as a chairman, you, you you can even ask people if you want. It's up to, you know, it doesn't have to be the board, but we right. all know enough people in town yeah. to do this. And it's not like we're asking them to do a job that's going to take, be a real nuisance that they're going to have to be, you know, showing up here every every week. or How often do they do anything? You know, with the ethics, and I found that the Association of Towns has so much information on it. Any board or committee that a child would want and guidelines or something that you would they would help you out with any of that, you know. Well, thank you, buddy, but I'd like to upgrade the policy and uh, I mean, maybe we could begin to adhere to it just like Doug said over here. You're the chairman. If you want to do that yourself, you know, you know, you know everybody in town. <laughs> okay, that's all I have. Uh, we're going to have to go in an executive session to discuss a legal matter. So uh, if everybody's welcome to stay, they'd like, but uh, it's probably going to be a little lengthy. So um, it is hereby resolved that the town board enter into an executive session to discuss personnel, legal, personnel, legal matters. Is there a motion? I'll make it. Is there a second? Second. Sandy? Yes. Excuse me, Councilman Jack Russo? Yes. Councilwoman Laura? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Yeah. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Like I said, thank you all for coming. And if uh, anybody wants to stick around, I'm sure nobody <laughs> probably would want to. Thank you, Ben.